This is a combined FACO's end case. We'll start with the mitomycin injection on a 30 gauge needle here being placed six to eight millimeters back from the limbus, injecting an intratenon's dose of mitomycin, small dose of 0.1 cc, uh, 0.2 milligrams per cc in terms of concentration, and then having the patient look down while rotating a uh, wet Q-tip, a moistened Q-tip, to keep that mitomycin back away from the limbus. The goal here, of course, is to create a more posterior bleb, and the uh, area of application is in the supranasal quadrant, will be the area where the zen will be intended to be implanted. Having the patient look down again and rotating the Q-tips here, keep the mitomycin away. I usually wait about a minute or so prior to making incisions. Mitomycin binds fairly quickly, so there's really very little concern about it entering the eye, although we do irrigate the surface of the eye to ensure there's no free mitomycin that may have leaked onto the surface of the eye prior to making incisions. The main incision is made temporal in all cases, and this will be used both for the FACO as well as for the Zen implantation as well. Once the cataract and lens has been performed, implantation has been performed, We'll leave the OVD in the eye while injecting some Helon GV. I find that keeps the AC well formed. Here's the Zen implant in that 27 gauge needle. We'll pass it through the main incision, lifting up slightly with a pair of forceps. And I want to place the needle just toward 12 o'clock. So it'll basically enter the angle at the 12 o'clock position, aiming to the supranasal quadrant using a gonio mirror. Here I want to basically place a needle just anterior to the trabecular meshwork. This avoids reflux bleeding from uh, the canal should we enter it. So only anteriorly does help to avoid that. We then use a Vera hook for kind of traction, pushing forward, trying to aim for a long track. We can always uh, end up going shorter if we need to, but it's better to go long at first. I'm trying to emerge two and a half to three millimeters back from the limbus. Here we're going tangentially, of course, because we've entered uh, the eye at the uh, temporal position. And then watch, I really try to get this needle pointing up, you know, really touching conge, almost like it looks like it's going to perforate. It, it really doesn't because we have the tissue here on, on uh, expansion with the mitomycin. Look how clear uh, the needle is shown under the conjunctiva. I really want to get that needle through tenons just under conjunctiva, really pushing up superficially, rotating the needle to really get it tenting up the conjunctiva so I know I'm through tenons and away from any kind of deep tenons placement. There's the uh, deployment sliders pass forward, needle is passed, uh, retracted into the cannula after the implants pass forward. And now once the uh, needle is into the cannula, we relax our hand here for a second take a pause and then pull back without flicking the cannula to avoid retraction of the device into the eye. Sometimes a small little um, heme here at the exit site of the uh, implantation. Put some, putting some pressure on for about 30 seconds here really helps to provide hemostasis here to prevent uh, any expansion of that hematoma. And really this is very self-limiting in most cases. Agonio mirror now shows the implantation in the angle, nicely positioned anterior to the TM. We see about a millimeter in the anterior chamber, well positioned here. This is exactly what we like to see uh, for the intraocular portion of the Zen implantation. You've got about a couple of millimeters of the implant in the subcon space. I like to make sure the implant is free and mobile. You see how free and mobile it is? It's not stuck down. It's very easily maneuverable by the cannula. And we'll basically milk it a bit to ensure we have a nice placement here again. And we know this is likely to be superficial because of how free and mobile it is. We'll now uh, inject BSS in the anterior chamber, removing the helon GV while we do that. And watch the bleb form here. This is priming the implant. And you'll see very quickly how wide the bleb forms. This tells us we're quite superficial. The fluid is all going more subconge. And the implant is actually sitting up. It's rising up, sitting away from the sclera. And this is the ideal position of the implant, telling us that we're superficial in placement. It's not deep because the implant actually is sitting above tenons and is actually uh, under conjunctiva. It's actually rising up above the sclera. It's not, not, it's not a problem really to have it point up a little bit like that. I think it's ideal, in fact. And you can see how wide the uh, extension of that fluid goes, again, telling us that we have a more subconge rather than a subtenons or intratenons placement. In fact, you can look at the conjunctiva and you can see how translucent it is. You can see, you can see the conge clearly. Underneath, you see uh, tenons and sclera telling us that we've separated conjunctiva from tenons by this very, very thin uh, elevated bleb here with fluid underneath it. The uh, intraocular pressure is quite good, uh, typically because of the control flow. And we have a well-formed wide bleb at the end of the case, which is ideal in these scenarios.